2017 was not a very good one for the residents of Ikorodu City in northeastern part of Lagos State. It was a time when there were so many negative stories coming from here. There were stories of ritual killing, of kidnapping, of murder, so much so that a lot of residents moved out. Some had to come and take their family away from Ikorodu. Now, 2018 is much better. We have not heard of such stories. What have they done to calm the situation? What have they done to win the confidence of the people back? Perhaps there are some strategies that other states in Nigeria could learn from or could um, implement in the issues of security. That and much more is what we are discussing on this episode of Big Story. You're welcome. I'm Uni John Mekwa. Ikorodu, which has become home to about 600,000 people, is situated approximately 36 kilometers north of Lagos. The area is bounded to the south by Lagos Lagoon, to the north by Ogun State, and to the east by a boundary with Abuwaikosi, a town in Ekpe Division of Lagos State. Some of the major towns include Imota, Ijede, Igbogbo and Baiku, all of which constitute their own local council development areas with their own traditional rulers. Together, these areas make up Ikorodu Division, a fast-growing part of Lagos State with a large industrial area containing several factories and another part of town which many have built their residence. Its fast-growing features attracted different characters into the area. Its boundary with creeks and connection with oil pipelines has made bunkering profitable and accessible. In 2016, Ikorodu experienced a high number of bunkering cases in areas like Igbo Lomu, Ishawo and Ogijo communities. Just as residents and the authorities were grappling with that, ritual killings by an alleged cult group called Bado came up. For months, Nigerians woke up to the news of families killed in cold blood, pregnant women murdered, children missing, body parts cut out, and other horrible ritual-related activities. It was a dreadful time for the people of Ikorodu and their family members. The paramount ruler of Igbo Kingdom, Abdul Kasali, had to deal with individuals who had experienced losses, although not in his kingdom, but very close to him. It was a terrible um, experience, something that we've never emphasized that would happen in our community. In Okorodu Division as a whole, we, we were regarded as being accommodative. We welcome all and sundry. And because of the peculiar nature of our people and the, the kind of land texture that God you know, bestowed on us, uh, because of the influx of so many people and the improvement in the commercial activities, you know, uh, something like this, at least to some extent, is bound to happen, but not to the extent of people taking the lives of innocent soul and uh, for whatever purpose. That, is, uh, was, uh, that period was a terrible experience. Igbogbo Kingdom is known, uh, is tagged as land of cool beauty. Uh, throughout the period when we have that issue of Bado and whatever, we, 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 we were spared by his grace, not by our power. We, we never had this experience of uh, such killing, but we have it. In, we have some communities surrounding us where some of these things happened. But we you know we take it upon ourselves that uh, they are part and parcel of this uh, kingdom, and we must rally around ourselves to ensure that the issue is a, a nip in the bud.
Although it was a problem in Ikorodu, it was Nigeria's problem, and the police had a huge work to do. There were several deployments and intervention, and this climaxed to the creation of the police mobile force, the Squadron Base 63, with about 800 men deployed to the units. It marked a strategy that all the points that all these activities, criminal activities have been done, he established a pin down point whereby the men are conducting stop and search. It serves as a barrier for people. They cannot pass through all the through the water waves. We have a static point where our men are doing stop and search with, without harassing or extorting the public. That is the basic. Regarding the kidnapping of a student like Ibokuta Memorial College, Agboa Model School, uh, Babintin Macaulay you know, School, the CP on its own, with other model schools in Lagos State, deployed policemen and mobile men to beef up security in those areas. And as you can see, since January to this man, I don't think there's any cases of kidnapping or fallacious crime in this area. All the bados, they have run away. And I promise they are not coming back to this area. All the vulnerable points that all these criminal activities have been carried out, my able CP in his only wisdom has mapped out strategies that all the points that these people are used to do all these uh, nefarious activities are being manned by police mobile men in pin down points. Assuming they are coming through this point A, you see policemen there. They are coming through point B, you see policemen. So when you see, when a, a, a criminal see policemen on road, on duty, they are human beings like us. They better relocate to another place. So that is why we are able to cope the menace for now. All model schools in Ikorodu and in fact in Lagos State have police presence. Pin down points manned by the men of the Squadron 63 with the responsibility to stop and search suspicious vehicles are spread all over Ikorodu in areas like Itoeki, which is the boundary between Lagos and Ogun State, Araga Junction, which is between Agboa and Ekpe, the Aja and Ekpe Road Axis, and K2, which is Agboa and Ekpe area. While this seems effective, the Commissioner of Police in Lagos, Imoimi Edgar, is quick to give credit to the adoption of community policing and safety partnership as a strategy in dealing with the situation since his deployment to Lagos in September 2017. Uh, I came on board with a clear policing plan. Uh, a plan power 